Okay, let's get to the squares. This is Abdus Satora versus Durabiali. And Durabiali has completely outplayed Abdus Satorov. And this is game one of the tiebreak. And Durabiali is winning. The most obvious move is knife f5 because the knight on h4 is terrible. The knight on f5, good, good. Then, you know, here, you know. And black's a pawn up and black's better. Uh, black's winning. Okay, and what's funny is earlier in the game, he played knight takes h4 to win a pawn. This gives up this square, so you should just go back. Okay, now Jurabiali, like, made every move was a mistake. And he missed every tactical trick. So basically, this is how you guys would play with white. Uh, with black. Not with white. With white, you wouldn't see anything, but with black. And this is why Abdus Satorov is good. One of the reasons that the, the gawking rabble, which is you, doesn't understand how good good players are is because when somebody is really good and sees everything, typically their opponent is really good and sees everything. Occasionally, somebody like Jeffrey Zhang, who's really good, plays somebody like me, and then you're like, man, Jeffrey's good because he's playing me. And then you realize how good he is. But if Jeffrey never plays people like me and just plays 2700s, it's hard to see how good he is. So this particular moment in time, for reasons I don't understand, Dura Biali just played terrible every move. Okay? And he's too good to do that. So, you know, let's wrap it up. And then, then you're going to see how good Abdus Satorov is. God damn! Because, I mean, Black's just winning here. After this, Black's up a pawn and better. Like, this is weak. This square is juicy. And he can't do anything. But he got too aggressive. He played G5, which, you know, is still good for Black. And White played C5. In this position, uh, he made the losing move. Um, there's several moves black can play where he's equal or better, but he didn't see white's next move. And, and he forced white to play it. That's the funny part. He played F5, double question mark, forcing white to win. Now, this move is amazingly bad. Here's what I mean. I don't mean the engine says it's bad. That's, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, if you play f5 and the guy moves his knight away, hanging his c pawn, that doesn't make any sense. Why is white doing that? So basically, f5 is insulting. f5 is like, man, you're dumb. You got to move your knight and I take that. And Abdul Satorov isn't doing that. Right, and the last move, I was just sort, he played c5. So if f5 attacks the knight, the knight moves away and you win the pawn, c5 is idiotic. And some of the top players don't think like I do. They're just like, nah, c5 is idiotic. And I'm like, it's idiotic if you're playing like a beginner, but if you're playing, you know, 2600 Super GM, then probably he was ready for f5. And he has a move against it. And you better figure out what it is. Because otherwise, c5 is really stupid. And, you know, he played f5 anyway. So g5 bad, f5 bad. Now white's winning. Benjamin Bach rated with a party of 87. He'll be Bach. Go, Benjamin. It's all about us. Yeah. Hooray for the raid. Raid. All right, good job. Okay, so white played 96 check, and then, you know, white's winning. So F5 is just, I mean, it's not that it's a bad move because the engine says it's a bad move. It's not a bad move because it is a bad move. It's a bad move, F5 is, because if white doesn't play 96 check, C5 was frankly ridiculous. So Vasif should have said... Why is my opponent playing F5 with C5 when F5 wins? And the only person who does this to me often is Ray Robson. 
I've played Ray Robson, I don't know, seven, eight times in my life, probably eight. And every game, he makes a move that previously I thought he couldn't play. And when he does that, I'm like, all right, why is he right and I'm wrong? I think about it and I figure it out. It's never happened that I was right and he was wrong. It's never happened. Never. When I stop Ray Robson from making a move and he makes the move, that's because I'm wrong. And then I figure out why I'm wrong and I'm like, oh, the move that I thought was good for me loses. Then I don't play that move. And so that's why, I mean, F5 is ridiculous. Okay, so you can't move your king because knight takes C6. I, don't, I can't even explain how good that is. It's too good. So you take, check. You can't allow knight takes C6 by moving your king like here or here. Um, although if you go here, actually, rook takes C6 check is, is a good move. So you played the right move. Then he played the right move. And white played for the win because black just played so stupidly, even though black's up a piece. Black's knight on h4 is terrible. Okay, now black decided to play badly after he messed it up. He knew he messed it up. King a8, rook b2. And even though white's down a piece, I mean, everything is perfect. You can't have a better position, and this knight is just offsides not playing. Um, bishop d5 is another blunder. Rook b6 is also a mistake. Basically, every move is a mistake because they're playing rapid. A brilliant move would have been d7 with the obvious idea, takes, takes, and you can't take the pawn because of rook b8, mate. So white's winning. And he didn't play d7. He played here, okay, which is okay. Knight takes g2, which is just terrible. Nothing to do with the position. d7 and white's winning again. And there's no move here. Okay, if it's white's move, I play rook b8 check. And then if you take, I take with check, and I queen with check, and I take everything, and I mate you. So you play king a7, fine. Rook b8. I mean, every move Gerbiali plays is terrible. g5, f5, knight takes g2, bishop d5. He went from, like, playing great every game to just making, like, seven blunders out of eight moves. So he goes from winning to just dead lost in, like, seven moves. Okay. Rook d7, fine. Yeah, and this is the nice part. This is the nice part. It's coming. The only move to stop mate is knight e6, and he played it, because I'm going to play here, and then mate or mate. So he stopped it. Knight b6. And um, I don't blame Durabiali for blundering here because he's losing anyway. But it's funny how Durabiali doesn't see any of the tactics in like this 12-move span. He just plays bad. Conversely, <laughs> Norderbeck saw most of the tactics. So it doesn't matter what Black does, he's losing. But he played here, and it's really good that all these moves happened because this is amazing what White did here. So it's good that Durabiali allowed this, so now we can see it on my stream. Probably he was thinking of my stream. Durabiali beat me so badly two years ago, he has to you know, apologize. Mm. Just banning people. All right. I banned enough. Uh, yeah, Rick A. Hate check. Frankly, not good for black. Only legal move, although he resigned. Only legal move and mate. This game was very, this match was very topsy turvy. If somebody won the first game, then the other guy won the second game, and so on. So when it looked like somebody was going to the match, then they didn't. Okay. So that was really nice uh, finish by Abdusatorov, but Jerry Bialy just played terribly. I mean, it was horrible. I understand playing horrible. I do it all the time, but come on. 